In the summer of 2008, when I was just nine years old, a mysterious and unexplainable event unfolded during a typical Saturday at our family cabin in rural Sullivan County, upstate New York. The cabin, affectionately named The Camp, was nestled in the heart of the woods on our expansive 60-acre property. The routine was familiar to us, my younger brother and I, along with our parents, spent every weekend surrounded by the tranquility of nature. Our simple cabin had only two rooms, one for sleeping and the other for living, with just one interior wall to separate them. The lack of modern amenities meant we relied on a gas power generator for light, a wood stove for cooking, and an outhouse for our bathroom needs. On this particular Saturday, after a day filled with outdoor adventures, we retreated to the cabin as the evening chill set in. The generator hummed to life, casting a warm glow inside. The cabin was sparsely furnished, with a bunk bed, sofa couch, wooden stove, and a few other essentials. As the sun dipped below the horizon, signaling the end of our outdoor activities, my brother and I decided to wind down inside the cabin. After a hearty meal cooked on the propane grill, my mother mentioned she had brought my plug-and-play Wheel of Fortune game for us to enjoy. Eagerly, I set up the game near the TV, positioned to the left of the large picture window at the rear of the cabin. As we played and the evening darkened, a sudden and vivid disruption shattered the peaceful atmosphere. It was around 8.30 p.m., and the sky wasn't completely dark yet, a typical upstate New York summer night. As I spun the wheel in the game, an intense burst of bright purple light emanated from just behind me, at the front of the cabin. In an instant, our attention shifted from the game to the surreal scene unfolding outside. The front yard was bathed in an otherworldly purple glow, and we watched in stunned silence as the light moved through the front window and filled the interior of the cabin. Motionless, we followed its path as it continued through the back picture window and into the backyard, illuminating everything in its wake. The radiant light traversed the yard, passed through the garden, and stretched across the field before vanishing into the depths of the woods. The entire episode unfolded within a matter of seconds, leaving us bewildered and speechless. I dropped the game in shock, and we all turned to each other, wide-eyed, with the same unspoken question, did you see that? Hours passed without any further unusual occurrences. I questioned my father about the mysterious purple light, but he had no answers. My mother suggested the possibility of lightning, a theory we quickly dismissed. Having experienced thunderstorms before, we knew this was unlike any lightning we'd ever seen. That night, we all slept huddled together in the living area, openly discussing the bizarre event. To this day, we remain perplexed by the bright purple light that seemingly appeared out of nowhere. Despite researching various explanations, from ball lightning to paranormal phenomena, nothing has come close to matching the inexplicable and captivating appearance of that radiant purple glow. As we continue to spend our free time at the camp, the memory of that mysterious night remains etched in our minds, a vivid testament to the enigmatic wonders that the woods can sometimes unveil. Last summer marked a turning point in my life, a harrowing experience that made me realize the world, for all its wonders, harbors a darker side. I was an 18-year-old male at the time, eager for adventure, surrounded by a lively group of friends from high school. We decided to embark on a camping expedition in the middle of nowhere, a three-day escapade before we all headed off to college. Our group consisted of my girlfriend Stephanie, my friend Brandon and his girlfriend Kaylee, and Stephen and his girlfriend Sarah. We were a mix of rebellious teenagers seeking the thrill of the unknown, armed with the essentials for survival and a stash of booze and green stuff for our getaway. After hours of driving down back roads, we stumbled upon a seemingly secluded spot that didn't reek of horror story potential. There were houses nearby, but not too close, and miraculously, all our parents thought it was a fine idea. We set up three tents, one for each couple. 
Being a former Boy Scout, I made sure we had everything we needed for the three days, food, water, and other essential supplies. Our car, a spacious Honda Pilot belonging to Stephen, was parked close to the site for constant oversight. The first night was peaceful. We rolled a blunt, had a few drinks, and called it a night. The next day, we decided to explore the woods a bit. Brandon and Kaylee opted to stay behind, enjoying some alone time. As we wandered down a trail we stumbled upon the day before, we found a metal fence leading to an old cemetery. Flowers and notes suggested recent activity, and beyond the cemetery, we discovered a larger trail with tire tracks and a makeshift parking lot. We explored a bit more, spotting deer, and then headed back as dusk approached. That night, however, was the complete opposite of the tranquility we experienced before. We woke up to a blood-curdling scream emanating from Stephen and Sarah's tent. The sound of fabric being torn filled the air, indicating an attack. Steve managed to fight off the assailant, getting both him and Sarah to the car. The problem was that Steve's tent was closest to the car, and the other two tents were nearer to the trail. To reach Steve's car, we had to pass whatever had attacked them. In a state of panic, we gathered our wits and made a run for the trail. I used my flashlight to navigate, we didn't want to risk missing the cemetery and being lost in the woods with the assailant on our tail. As we reached the trail, we heard the pursuing footsteps several yards behind us. We found the cemetery easily, hopped the fence, and hid in complete silence, praying the assailant wouldn't discover us. The metallic shaking of someone climbing the fence sent shivers down my spine. The guy had tracked us down, likely due to Steve's shouted reference to the cemetery. We stayed still, barely breathing, as the footsteps approached. In a surge of adrenaline, I realized I had a small Swiss army knife in my pocket. As the guy came right above me, I seized the opportunity and thrust the knife behind his leg. He tumbled to the ground with a shriek of pain, dropping his weapon, a massive machete. As headlights rounded the corner, Steve had arrived, and we sprinted to the car. The guy, tall and bulky, wore a look of pure hatred as he clutched his injured leg. I was the last one in the car, and as I closed the door, we sped away from the nightmare. The girls were in tears, and we drove until we reached the nearest house, where a kind elderly couple provided directions to a motel. In the morning, the man accompanied us with his hunting rifle to retrieve our belongings. Upon our return to the campsite, we found nothing stolen but all our tents were slashed. The elderly woman called the police, and when we got back, officers were on the scene. We provided our statements, and they assured us they would search for the assailant. Despite their efforts, the police never found the guy. College eventually scattered our group, and we rarely discussed that traumatic night. The wounds, both physical and emotional, healed over time, but the scars remained. My advice to all, choose populated camping spots, no matter how mundane, and stay within reach of help and law enforcement. Stay safe, everyone. In the heart of rural Appalachia, nestled within the embrace of thick woods, I found solace and enchantment in the wilderness that surrounded me. Eager to share the magic with those close to my heart, I often invited friends to join me on camping escapades. However, an eerie encounter in the woods a few years ago changed the way I perceived the serene beauty of my secluded haven. It all began when my aunt purchased a quaint cabin from the Amish, intending it to be a playhouse for my younger cousin. Little did we know, this innocuous cabin would become the epicenter of an unnerving experience that still sends shivers down my spine. My cousin, unable to endure a full night within its walls, left the cabin largely untouched. Intrigued by its mysterious allure, I decided to extend an invitation to a friend for a weekend in the wilderness. One overcast weekend, I reached out to a friend, eager to share the wonders of the woods. 
With the promise of adventure, he accepted the invitation, and his mother graciously dropped him off. We set out on foot, embarking on a journey to the heart of the woods. Yet, fate had other plans for us that evening. As the sky darkened, a looming storm prompted my friend to suggest seeking refuge in the cabin. Hesitant but swayed by the impending weather, I contacted my aunt for approval. With the green light, we retraced our steps to the cabin atop the hill. The cabin, a silent witness to the unfolding events, awaited our arrival. As darkness enveloped the surroundings, we settled into the cozy interior, indulging in what were meant to be camping rations. Engaged in conversation, we lost track of time until the storm unleashed its fury outside. Raindrops drummed on the time-worn roof, creating a soothing symphony. The tranquility, however, was shattered when an unexpected visitor knocked on the cabin door. Peering through the window, I was met with the unsettling sight of a figure standing in the rain. Assuming my friend had ventured outside, I prepared to open the door. Yet, a chilling revelation paralyzed me, the figure at the door was not my friend. Panic set in as I realized he was still sound asleep in his bed. The imposter outside emitted a throaty noise, akin to clearing its throat, before vanishing into the woods. Fear clutched at my chest as I pondered the surreal encounter. Summoning the courage to speak, I questioned my friend about the ordeal. To my relief, he had also witnessed the mysterious figure and heard its unnerving whispers. Dread lingered in the air as we lay in the darkness, too petrified to move. Throughout the night, eerie sounds reverberated, taps on the windows and the haunting sound of fingers tracing the time-worn roof. Morning brought a semblance of relief, but the horror of the night lingered. We packed hastily, unraveling the mystery of the cabin we had thought was a safe haven. As we ascended the hill, a cold realization gripped me, we had never locked the door. Unease settled in as I cast furtive glances back at the cabin, vowing never to spend another night within its enigmatic confines. To this day, the cabin stands as a silent testament to a night of terror, a haunting memory that forever altered my perception of the tranquil wilderness I once held dear. The woods, once a sanctuary, now bear the weight of an unspoken fear that accompanies me every Midsummer's Eve. About a decade ago, my ex-significant other and I were eagerly planning a romantic weekend getaway to his mother's childhood home, now serving as a summer cottage on a remote Tylee island. The journey was an adventure in itself, involving leaving our car by the road, a two-kilometer trek through the woods, and a final leg requiring us to row a boat across a small river. Little did we know that this picturesque setting would soon become the backdrop for an experience that still sends shivers down my spine. Upon reaching the cabin, we discovered the front door key was missing. A minor hiccup, or so we thought. Despite a subtle feeling of unease, I dismissed it as travel fatigue. My then significant other, who was both skinny and agile, managed to slip through a window, unlocking the door from the inside. We settled in, unpacked our belongings, and lit a fire to warm up the sauna, a customary ritual during midsummer in the area. As nightfall approached, my ex suggested we sleep in the first room on the left, the old master bedroom. As I prepared the bed, an overwhelming sense of dread washed over me. It was as if an invisible force was signaling that we were unwelcome guests. Suppressing my unease, I said nothing, determined not to let it mar our weekend. Before heading to the sauna, we decided to have a bite to eat. It was during this meal that my ex's demeanor changed, he turned pale, complained of sudden illness, and began experiencing constant chills. Concerned, I felt his forehead and discovered he had a high fever. Bewildered by his sudden ailment, we concluded it was best for him to rest. Reluctantly, we entered the master bedroom to lie down. What transpired next is etched vividly in my memory. My ex lay with closed eyes, emitting an intense, 
sickly warmth. Simultaneously, a cold feeling of dread enveloped the room, escalating to pure fear. My heart raced as I realized our isolation, no phone, no alternative transportation, and my ex too unwell to drive. Then, in the doorway, a shadowy male figure materialized, radiating malevolence. It lingered, conveying a sense of hate, hesitant to fully enter but making it clear that escape through the sealed window was the only option. Summoning every ounce of strength, I shook my ex, urgently explaining that we had to leave immediately. Miraculously, the figure vanished as my focus shifted to helping my ex pack. By the time we crossed the river, his health had significantly improved. Still, I refrained from revealing the supernatural encounter, attributing our abrupt departure to his sudden illness. Back at his parents' house, amidst a midsummer family gathering, I began doubting the reality of what I had experienced. To my astonishment, my ex's uncle nonchalantly mentioned that the old cottage was haunted. His father had shared tales of strange occurrences dating back before he was born. A peculiar old man had once claimed to realign the energy flow around the house, banishing evil. My stomach churned as the uncle revealed that the entity favored the master bedroom, the very room we had hastily vacated. Unable to muster the courage to inquire further, I sat in silent contemplation, haunted by the unanswered questions. What were the origins of this entity? What had it done in the past to assert its presence? I couldn't shake the lingering thought, what might have befallen us had we not made a hasty escape that eerie night? When I was a kid, my mum's side of the family used to own this quaint little cabin tucked away in the woods of the Pocono Mountains. It wasn't anything fancy, no hot tubs or luxurious amenities. Instead, it was a small hunting cabin built by my late grandfather and my uncles. A simple porch with a picnic bench, a gravel parking lot, and about 15 feet away, a decent-sized fire pit with a bench and a few logs around it. The driveway was a lengthy journey up the side of the mountain, branching off a secluded highway. The cabin was surrounded by trees, and even though we had a neighbor about half a mile away, the thick woods provided a natural barrier, making the place feel truly remote. Growing up, my cousins and I would spend endless summers up there, exploring the vast land, hiking, and enjoying the local amusement park. Bonfires were a regular occurrence, and the nights were filled with the warm glow of the flames, the aroma of roasted marshmallows, and the sizzle of burgers on the grill. We'd often take nighttime strolls down the drive, away from the denser trees, just to gaze at the stars free from any city light pollution. It was magical, a cherished part of my childhood. One summer, when I was thirteen, my family of five embarked on a trip to the cabin. There we were, me, my two older sisters, my mum, and dad. I've always had a fear of the dark, especially when it comes to the woods at night. So, I usually stuck close to someone if I had to venture outside. One particular night, after a day filled with adventure, we gathered around the fire. Tired from the day's activities, I decided to call it a night and joined my mum inside on the couch. Before I knew it, I was fast asleep in the living room. A few hours later, I woke up, disappointed that I had missed the rest of the bonfire. Pulling aside the curtains, I saw the fire pit still ablaze and what I assumed was my dad sitting on the bench, alone in the darkness. Not wanting him to be by himself, I decided to join him. Ignoring my usual fear of the dark, I opened the door and stepped onto the porch, calling out to my dad. However, something felt off. As I walked toward the fire pit, my calls went unanswered. The closer I got, the more apparent it became that the roaring fire I should have heard was absent, and my dad was no longer on the bench. I froze. My blood turned ice cold as realization set in. Panic seized me, and without daring to look back, I sprinted back to the safety of the cabin, locked the door, 
and ran into my dad's bedroom. There he was, peacefully asleep under his blankets. Confused and terrified, I crawled under the covers beside him, praying to fall asleep and forget the eerie encounter. The next morning, I mustered the courage to tell my parents about the night's events. My mum dismissed it as just a dream, but I knew it wasn't. I had woken up on the couch right before going outside, and the memory of that bone-chilling silence was etched into my mind. My dad tried to rationalize it, pointing out that he always deadbolts the door and puts out the fire before bed. He insisted it couldn't have happened the way I described. All I knew was what I saw, and it wasn't a dream. It was a chilling experience that left me questioning the boundaries between reality and the mysterious world that lurked in the woods surrounding our family cabin.